We used to have to change our address to get a job. Now we have to change our job to sustain that address. I feel what the housing crisis has done to inner city communities is it's dispersed them and gentrification has come in and absolutely tore generations from um, families and the areas. Growing up in the flats was amazing. Loved the flats. Everybody from the flats loved the flats. It's all we knew. Um, it's a very tight-knit community. How's it going? I'm Tardin's Power. I'm from the Talking Bollocks podcast and I'm from Doors S3 Flats. It's great thinking back on memories from the flats years ago, out with the boys all day. The only problem was that you, you had to do two things. You had to learn how to play football or you had to learn how to fight. There wasn't much else to do. Um, the community was great. You just think back on memories in the flats. You're going down the balcony, knocking for your mates. Everyone's door was open. It was always good like that. You just go in and out people's houses. Everyone was trusted in the flats. It was amazing. Loved the flats. I'm Calvin O'Brien. I'm the other co-host of the Talking Bollocks podcast. Yeah, I feel what the housing crisis has done to inner city communities is it's dispersed them and gentrification has come in and absolutely tore generations from um, families and the areas. So when we were growing up, it wasn't uncommon for your, your nanny to be living close by because no one really flew far from the nest, as the saying goes. But now I think people are being pushed out and with the, what is an affordable housing these days, so people are being pushed out to the outskirts of Dublin and even down to the country and a lot of people have emigrated because they can't even afford to stay where they grew up. So uh, there's a good saying that I heard recently that we used to have to change our address to get a job. Now we have to change our job to sustain that address. So I feel like we are being pushed out. Um, there's no consideration for the people that are living there. Uh, this is the most expensive real estate in the country is inner city Dublin. So the problem there is the people that are living in it, once they're out, you can get the property developments in, you get overseas investments, you get trust funds, and these are given, being given tax breaks by the government, which are not taking into consideration the people that are living there. Things are completely different now. If you look at the flats now, there's nobody left here anymore. Everybody has been forced to move out. Then people, the flats in here are two, there's one or two, with, a couple with three bedroom, but uh, most of them are two bedroom flats. People are being forced to move out, go to different communities where they don't want to go, into another two-bedroom apartment or another two-bedroom flat. And nobody's happy with it, really. Um, there's people still here that won't move because um, what's the point? So in the flats, there's a few families in here with three and four generations still in the flats. They're talking six to eight people, grandmothers, their daughters, their daughters, and then they're having kids young. And they're still living in these flats, six to eight. Six to eight people in a flat, probably even more than some of them, in two bedrooms. And all they're looking for is to be moved into a bigger place. If you're going to throw us out here, bring us to a bigger place and make it worth our while to move out. Just doesn't make sense. I, I myself, I, I, was, I declared myself homeless two or three years ago. I was couch surfing for a long time as well. So I was working at the time, I was bringing in money so I'd pay a friend, pay a family member to let me stay there for the week. I'd give them only 20 or 30 euro, but that got me through. I'd pay for my own food and stuff like that. So I had the couch show for a while, but then I had to, I wasn't getting nowhere with it, so I had, to, I had to go into homeless accommodation. Now, I don't drink and I don't do drugs. I did in the past, I don't anymore. So when I was put into homeless accommodation where it's surrounded by drinking drugs, it's not a nice feeling, you know? And the thing with that is, the homeless accommodations, I was looking it up, I think that it's like 40% of um, homeless people and homeless accommodations are based in Dublin 7, Dublin 1 and Dublin 8. Um, like, why, why is all the homeless facilities based around these disadvantaged areas? That's because the people in government that live out in Dorky or live in Black Rock or Fox Rock or wherever they're living, the people that are living there, they don't want these homeless facilities on their doorstep. They don't want to walk out and see these people every day. These are, these are people who are addicts, they're, they're struggling. It's all through trauma, through broken families, through, through living, growing up in these disadvantaged areas. And uh, that's the reason why a lot of them have turned addicts. They, it's a coping mechanism. But these homeless facilities, you, you'll see these people in government and other people, they come in from Dorky and Fox Rock and, uh, on a Christmas Eve and they'll hand out a few dinners here and there and say, look what we did for the homeless. That's not good enough. Put the homeless facilities out and use our areas. Stop giving them to the disadvantaged areas. Stop putting homeless facilities in Ballymoon and in Dublin 1 and Dublin 7. It's not right. For me personally, growing up, I was always taught if you worked hard, you can get anything you want in life. I went through 12 years at school, four years in college. I have a degree and I have a well-paying job and I still can't afford to move out of home. I'm 27 and I take that very, 
I beat myself up over it a lot, but then I look at other people who are my age and even a bit older, and they're in the same boat, and that shouldn't be the case. If we lived in any other country in Europe, we could walk into a house, we'd get a mortgage approved like that. But now I'm sitting at home, I don't know when I'm going to be able to afford to move out, and I look at daft and the rent is through the roof, I look at the price on houses, people are putting in bids on houses 120 times the price of what the house is, um, 120% the price of what the house is, and it's scandalous, and I just think there's no light at the end of the tunnel, like when is this all going to come to a head, people are talking about the bubble bursting with Covid and stuff like that, but it's gone worse. So. I think the only option for someone my age who has a qualification or has ambition will be to emigrate, which is sad to see because that's something that's happened with Ireland and it's, it's a recurring theme that we had for hundreds of years where we're scattered all over the globe. No matter where you go, you have somewhat Irish heritage, but that's because they left for more prosperous ambitions. But that shouldn't be the case. It's 2021. We should be one of the most prosperous countries in Ireland or in Europe. And we're the first generation since the foundation of the state to have a worse than the generation that's came before us. But that should never be the case. We should be on an upward trajectory and it shouldn't stagnate and go down. So I feel like we're suffering now just align the pockets of a select few people in, in this country. And look, I'll always carry the flats <laughs> throughout the podcast. I'll always talk about life growing up the flats because the flats were amazing. I love them and it breaks me hard to think that they're not going to be here for much longer, you know what I mean? But look, listen, it is what it is. I was carried those yesterday on me back in the podcast and I'll always talk about the good memories we had in the cause. Life growing up in the flat, you won't get it anywhere else. A lot of people don't really understand it. From the outside looking in, supposedly it's some sort of scurdy place and you don't know what's behind one of them hall doors. Like, that's a home. You know what I mean? I grew up there. My brother and sister grew up there with me. My man and dad grew up in them. So yeah, I don't understand why it has this kind of negative perception that Behind that door is no hope for anybody. It's great. I wouldn't, I, I'm glad I grew up the way I did, and I'm sure you are as well. Um, it is a shame flats are being knocked down, but I, I get it. Uh, times change, uh, criteria change for housing. I've no problem with flats being knocked down or renovated, as long as people in there are given a home in the same area. That's what happened to me, and I suppose, looking back, I'm fortunate now that where I live is where the flats once stood that I grew up in. But that's, that's funny now that that's not the case. Once these go down, more than likely these people are going to a different address. So it's a shame. Um, another thing I wanted to touch on as well is they're pulling down flats and dispersing people, but they're putting in student accommodation, which is not housing people. That's, that's a cash cow, you know? Cow. Every nine months you're gonna have new people in there. Uh, they're gonna pay over the top rent, but they don't care because it's short term. Like you can't, it's not a viable option to live in what's it, like six bedrooms and one common living area that's you can't put families in there no. so again that's it's the narrative it's the motive of people they're lying in their pockets they're not looking to benefit the people